When I think about Christmas video games, the first thing I think about is Parasite Eve. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be lots of great carnage and mutants, god darn it, and so much to fear. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Released in 1998 for the PlayStation, and a sequel to a novel that I know I have to read now, Parasite Eve is a science fiction horror RPG that is an absolute must play for fans of PS1 RPGs. The game takes place in Manhattan, Christmas Eve, and opens up with the protagonist, Aya Brea, a rookie police officer, and some guy who we're gonna assume is her date, but the poor guy doesn't have a name. They go down to Carnegie Hall, Carnegie, Carnegie, Ooh, Carnegie, do they mean carnage? Foreshadowing? Uh, to see the opera. During the performance, everyone suddenly bursts into flames. Wow, these actors are great. They're on fire. <laughs> so everyone catches fire except for Aya and the actress on stage. This actress transforms and reveals herself to be Eve, some crazy biological monster. Aya eventually discovers that Eve is a creature that has the ability to affect people's mitochondria. Eve decides to go across New York, taking over the entire city and murdering countless citizens of the country. For some reason, Aya seems to be the only person immune to Eve's control, and for that reason, she's the only one that can stop this biological threat. It's the battle for New York, and the whole city won't be the same when they're done. The story of Parasite Eve is so well done, being an excellent piece of horror science fiction, like something Michael Crichton would write. It's got some very interesting ideas about biology, a really creepy villain, intriguing dialogue, and the excitement of a feature film, like this game could honestly make a really good movie, especially since it has some pretty interesting characters. Aya is a pretty kick-ass heroine. And it's nice to play as a woman in an RPG for once, or a woman in general for once. Although I hear they kind of ruined her in the third game. She has some understandable internal struggles throughout the game, and she's an easy protagonist to root for, and also very interesting. Her partner, Daniel, is pretty awesome. He punches the paparazzi right in the face, so you know he's pretty awesome. Falcon PUNCH! Daniel has a pretty realistic backstory too, and he plays extremely well off of Aya. There are also a couple of other major characters and no real NPC, the whole game just kind of has this isolated feel to it, like there's not that many people and that kind of just adds to the tone. Dark, lonely, dreary. Merry Christmas! It's a game that only lasts about 10 hours for a playthrough, so having few characters was definitely the right move. And with some really amazing writing, you'll find yourself hooked rather quickly, especially because the game is well paced and always moving forward. The game takes place from December 24th to 29th across the city of New York, and it runs like a regular RPG mixed with Resident Evil, in which you run around, pick up items, and navigate across creepy locations. I regret to inform you that some levels can be a little maze-like, but nothing is too frustrating as long as you pay attention and take your time. You'll have some scenes where the danger is not in battles, but you'll have to escape from some threat, so not to spoil, but watch out for those, they can be tough. The game also has something of a New Game Plus feature where you have to climb the Chrysler Tower in order to find the true final boss. The building is 77 floors, just like in real life with most of the floors being randomly generated, so have fun with that. Anyway, Aya is your only character, so you only have to worry about her equipment and well-being as you get into these somewhat random encounters by running into enemies that are patrolling the area in a manner that's a lot like Chrono Trigger. Your weapons in this game are a wide array of firearms that you can fine-tune and improve, so you have to pick up ammo off of enemies in boxes in order to stay in the fight. Also, make sure you reload your weapons after every battle, or else you'll have to reload it in the middle of battle, and that's something you probably don't want to do. The battle system of Parasite Eve is the most fun and unique part of the game. How it works is that when you get into battle, you can't actually attack until your action bar fills up. Until then, you're maneuvering around the enemies in a usually very tight, 
invisible wall ridden area. When the action bar does fill up, you can finally attack with either your firearm at a distance or your magic. Oh, sorry, as the game calls it, parasite energy. Fuck it, it's magic. Parasite energy includes healing, boosts, and more. And what's great about it is that it accumulates by itself over time, but not fast enough that you rely on it. Your attacks have a certain range, but that varies depending on the weapon you're using. And you can still attack enemies that are out of your range, but it will almost never hit or do minimal damage when it does. And after your turn's over, you guessed it, it's back to running around like a total ass. But seriously, the battle system is a lot of fun in how action oriented it is, and how you have to maneuver well in order to get out of tight situations. For example, you have to do battle on this little horse and carriage this one time, and it's really claustrophobic, challenging, and, well, somewhat realistic. Well, I guess as realistic as a biological monster attacking you on a moving horse carriage can be. The battle system is all about reflexes, pattern recognition, and good old strategy to win the day. The game also has perfect difficulty in my opinion, with a reasonable curve, though the final boss was a little too easy in my opinion. Still, it's an amazing battle system and it makes the game a ton of fun. As far as graphics go, Parasite Eve looks friggin amazing for its time and it's still quite awesome today. The game is two discs despite its short length because it's filled with these really awesome cutscenes full of gruesome or awesome stuff. They really add to the cinematic feel of the game. The level design is also very well done, like the creepy museum you have to visit, Central Park at night, an abandoned hospital, you always feel on edge in the game, and that takes smart design. Parasite Eve also has some great music that perfectly matches the feeling of exploring these creepy places, but there aren't too many iPod worthy songs, aside from a few catchy ones. The game is also really smart about where it uses its music because some scenes only have the sounds of Aya's footsteps and that really adds to the tension and atmosphere. It's great! In conclusion, Parasite Eve may run a lot like any other action RPG, but it has a fantastic and unique battle system, and pretty much everything about the game is synchronized amazingly with the tone of the story. Like, it's not a particularly scary game in the traditional sense, but it's more about the grim tone, the isolation you feel, the suspense. This is real horror to me. No weak jump scares here. The story was fantastic science fiction that has all the ass whooping suspense and fun science facts of a Michael Crichton novel, and it kept me hooked the whole way through. If you like something that's a little different, if you don't want to play another RPG that's about mad, well, kind of magic, about elves, dwarves, or like olden times, check this one out because it's one of the best titles on the PS1 as far as I'm concerned. And since it's on the PSN, there's no real reason you shouldn't check it out. Thanks for watching.